Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review today. We're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Dark Knights Metal Gladiator Batman. I ordered this figure from the CMD store. It's a Canadian based website. They have all the newest McFarlane DC Multiverse figures in stock and ready to ship. I notice Figurine for All also has them, another Canadian website. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the top, 22 moving parts, McFarlane Toys. Age of 12 plus, DC Multiverse, Gladiator Batman. Here he's in the package. Looks like he has a display stand, collector's card, and a large battle axe. One side of the package, Gladiator Batman from Dark Knight's Metal. Other side, Gladiator Batman. At the bottom, got a bunch of credits, and there is a barcode, in case it helps anybody. And at the back side, here's a crazy picture from Dark Knight's Metal. We have the Gladiator Batman riding on the Joker Dragon. So no further ado, let's open him up. And I got three of these figures from the CMD store. They had all the McFarland figures in stock, but I'd already pre-ordered the bundle at the McFarland toy store. Considering canceling there and ordering from one of these other websites, we'll see, I'll give it a few more days. We've got the Kingdom Come Armored Batman, the Signal Duke Thomas, and Dark Knight's Metal Gladiator Batman. All right, now that I have this figure out of the package, here he is with all of his accessories laid out. He comes with a display stand, a collector's card, and then a giant battle axe. But before taking a look at those, let's talk about and check out the actual figure. So this is Gladiator Batman from Dark Knight's Metal. Funny thing is, Kenner made a Gladiator Batman many years ago in their Legends of Batman line. I've actually got one still sealed, but it's boxed up somewhere. This Batman here is a more modern Gladiator Batman. He's from the Dark Knight's Metal storyline. In this story, he was trapped on Mongo's planet Warworld. Many members of the Justice League have been bound by special armor that strips them of their powers and they're forced to fight any monster, machine, or abomination that Mongo throws at them. This is the same story that led to that large mech Justice League combined mega figure that's coming up soon. Kind of makes me wonder if we might get some other Gladiator Justice League members in the future. But for now, they start off with Batman. Very logical choice for McFarlane. So let's take a look at him. Starting with his face here, he's got this sort of medieval looking helmet, bat ears, spikes. Looks good. It's got some battle damage. The top here, the side here, even his face is damaged. I can see a scar going through it. As we go further down, the sculpt and detail is amazing on this suit. Bat symbol here, once again, more damage on the chest. Shoulder pads are bats with wings covered with shoulders. Belt here, it's got a couple axes. Sculpting detail is fantastic. I mean, just look at everything. The detailing is great. A lot of different texturing. He's got, looks like double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, more bat type boots, forearm gauntlets. His cape looks nice, kind of a reddish color ton of texture on this thing. Overall, it's a very good looking figure, but not exactly a necessary figure in everyone's Batman collection, that's for sure. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Sculpt is excellent on this guy. Now to look at his accessories. Let's start off with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand, typical McFarland stand, black perfect circle. It's got one peg for the pegles on his feet, and it says DC on the bottom. Very thin, very basic. Now for his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of Gladiator Batman from the comics. Gladiator Batman from Dark Knight's Metal. On the back, there is a description. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause now. Now for his battle axe. It's a large axe, the blade at the top looks like half the bat symbol, and it's got some sort of spike side here. The handle looks to be made of wood, nice sculpt and detail, wrap around the grip. Here's Batman holding his battle axe. He can hold it with either one hand or with two. I thought he would also look pretty good holding the axe that came with the vampire Batman. It's another large battle axe, got the bat symbol on it, a little spike at the bottom of the handle. And here's Gladiator Batman, holding the vampire Batman's battle axe. 
Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's look at his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing at about 7.2 inches tall, which can translate to about 18 centimeters. Now for his articulation. Start with his head here. Of course, you're going to rotate from side to side. He can look up about that far, down about that far. Not too bad. Can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulder pads look like they're going to obstruct a lot of the articulation, but they can actually go over the cape. Shoulders go up, kind of got to mess a little bit, get over here, and then go all the way on top. It's going to allow you to hold his battle axe up in sort of a striking pose. So pretty nicely done. These giant elaborate shoulder pads, but give you the workaround so they don't obstruct the articulation too much. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. Ball joints. He's got a butterfly joint between the shoulder and chest area. Increase the range of motion and cover that large gap. It's got a bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows, they go all the way in. His wrist can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. In his torso, he's got a ball joint, rotate around, forward and back. Another one in his waist, rotate around, forward and back, giving him pretty good range of motion in his torso area. Legs completely does the splits. Not a ball joint, but a similar type of idea. Rotation, minimal there, but he does have a thigh cut below that. Not too many McFarlane figures have that. Double jointed knees. That is ankle here, forward and back. Rotation, tilt, rock. And he's got toe articulation as well. For this next scene, we're going to switch to War World. This is Super 7 Snake Mountain playset. Thought it would work good for Mongols War World. This is where he's making the Justice League members fight gladiator style. Mongol pits Batman against this giant monstrous creature. Doesn't seem like Batman has a chance. Of course, Batman gets the upper hand and wins. He's got this thing beaten up and bloody. Once Mongol sees his new gladiator Batman, how powerful he is, he decides to pit him up against his number one fighter. This is the Superman gladiator. They walk up to each other. Get ready to fight in honorable combat. They start to launch toward each other. They're about to have this giant fight. And neither one has any powers. Batman has the edge now. And of course, with no powers, Batman gets the upper hand and takes out Superman. But he's not willing to make that killing blow. Now let's check him out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some of the McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Now, I would love to compare him with the old Kenner Gladiator Batman, but like I said, I've got one sealed. It's boxed away somewhere. I don't have one open. Here's an image of that old Gladiator Batman. Kind of interesting. Another Gladiator Batman. Not remotely based off the same material. Here's the Dark Knight's Metal Gladiator Batman next to the Future State Superman. He's from War of the Worlds. Now, they're from completely different comic stories. Dark Knight's Metal, Future State but they were both kept from Mongol, put onto a war world, and forced to fight gladiator style with no powers. And here he is, next to Duke Thomas in an armored bat suit. He's from Dark Knight's Metal, Tales of the Dark Multiverse. These guys would look fantastic fighting together. Here's this Dark Knight's Metal gladiator Batman, next to a regular Dark Knight's Metal Batman. And here, next to a Death Metal Batman. Here's Gladiator Batman, next to several other Batman figures. These are all from the comics. Then, with several more Batman figures, these are also from the comics. And now, with even more Batman figures, these are from different various forms of media. Now let's check them out. Next to some other recently released McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here he is, next to Duke Thomas the Signal and the Kingdom Come Batman. These are the newest figures that I have, and the rest of them are on the way. And here he is, next to the gold label Walmart exclusive Eradicator and Vampire Batman. Then, next to the Target exclusive Dead Man and Flashpoint Aquaman. And now, next to the Shazam 2 movie Shazam and the Amazon exclusive Tim Drake Robin. Here's this Batman, next to the Amazon exclusive Batman Family 5 pack. And here he is, next to the two most recent mega figures, Mongol and Frankenstein. Then, next to the most recent McFarlane gaming wave, we have the Arkham City Sick Joker and the Arkham Knight Scarecrow and Red Hood. And now, with McFarlane's Mortal Kombat 11 DC offerings, we have the Batman Laughs and Joker. Here's this Batman, next to the McFarlane Toy Store exclusive Hush Superman and Rebirth Kid Flash. Now let's check him out. 
Next most recent build a figure waves. Here he is with the Crime Syndicate wave. Collect a build Star of the Conqueror. And here he is next to the Speed Metal wave. Collect a build the Darkest Knight. Then with the Batman Arkham City wave. Collect a build an undersized Solomon Grundy. And here he is next to the Walmart exclusive Gold Label Black and Gray variants. Here's Gladiator Batman next to the third wave of Page Punchers. This is a Flash themed wave. We have Flash, the Atom, Heat Wave, Grilly Grodd, and both versions of Captain Cold. And here he is, next to the second wave of Page Punchers. This is based off Injustice 2. We have Batman and Green Arrow, and I have Dr. Fate Supergirl on the way. Then, next to the first wave of Page Punchers, this is a Black Adam themed wave. We have Batman, Constantine, Superman, and Black Adam. And now, here he is, next to some recent Target exclusive releases. We have Ocean Master and the 30th anniversary of Batman from Batman the Animated Series. Rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. Here's Batman. Next is more Target exclusive releases. We have the Kyle Rayner Green Lantern from Changing the Guard, Defiance Deathstroke, the Black Adam movie, Black Adam with Throne, and the Justice League Endless Winter Wonder Woman variant. And finally, next is some recent Walmart exclusive figures. We have Azrael Batman Armor, Parallax Hal Jordan, Rebirth Shazam, and the Speed Battle Dark Flash. Now check him out, next to some action figures from different various companies, to see how he fits in both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarland figure, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the large action figure lines I collect, and work way smaller. But first, let's check him out with some of his McFarland toys brothers, and I'm going to include as many Batman figures as I can during these comparisons. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarland toys, all set at scale. Then, next is more McFarland toys. These are from different various video game properties. And now, next is some Jack specific wrestling figures. Here's Batman, next to a container of strawberries. And here he is, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, next is some DC Direct and DC Collectibles Batman figures. And here he is, standing with some NECA Batman figures. Then, next is some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, Next to some Jazzwares, AEW wrestlers. And here he is. Next to some Mezco, 112 Collective Batman figures. Then, next to some Mattel, DC Universe Classics, and Multiverse figures. And here he is. Next to some Matefix figures. Then, with some Hasbro, Marvel Legends. And here he is. Next to some SH Figure Arts Batman figures. And finally, next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, he's a pretty nice Batman figure but I would not describe him as a necessary Batman figure in my Batman collection. I'm not going to use him for a lot of scenarios. I prefer the more normal, modern-looking Batman figures for different actuary photography and scenarios. That being said, this is a gorgeous figure. The sculpting detail is amazing. The different texturing, the battle damage, the way they have the big armor pieces and they still make the articulation work. It's very well done, well executed. His articulation, more than I would expect looking at this guy. Anything that looks limited, they found a workaround. His accessory, the battle axe, it's pretty cool. Sculpt and paint job are just top notch, excellent on this guy. If I were to rate this figure, I'm going to give him a 7.5 out of 10, and that is higher than I expected, as I'm really not going to get a lot of use out of a gladiator Batman of Ice Fair World. But he does look like a badass beast. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.